All right, quick update. So we got the monitor mounted in a vertical orientation. Uh, we did some updates to the settings for RetroArch. Uh, the updates for the settings for uh, um, a track mode. And so we have a little bit left to do. Obviously we have to take care of this bezel. So we're gonna do the reverse printing. Um, cut some plexi, um, poor man's reverse printing. Cut some plexi, mask it off, tape it up, call it a day. All right, so what we have, we have our atomic pie connected. No volume. I thought this, this volume thing should work, at least with the, uh, Maybe it's this one. Who knows? I guess there's no volume in, in the attract mode for centipede anyways. So, yeah. Yeah, so that's what we have. Janky configuration, but we still gotta work on some things. So that's brown. And these are the buttons. So when I push a button, all right, moving on along. Um, here is the final layout of the underbelly of the control panel. Um, we replace the buttons, obviously, um, half style buttons. Uh, we have our USB encoder board. Um, what's different here is the, um, there is no OptiPack. So we used to have the OptiPack here. We're gonna run the, um, run the spinner and the uh, trackball into the OptiPack. Uh, it has, uh, doesn't have the TX um, RX. It has this, or, or Y, Y1, Y2, X1, X2. It has this thing called TX and RX, um, which is encoded, so we can use that. Um, or it'd be too hard to figure out how to use that. So transitioned, what we decided to do was to get a different, um, we got a different spinner. So this is the spinner that would interface with the, um, normally interface. You put that in there, it's a nice drop in. Um, and uh, you, you connect the two in one interface port and then that has the USB output and that connects to the computer. However, uh, the 12 in one interface port is not available. Um, you know, no one's gonna be available. So, what we did was we got the Glenn's Retro Show USB spinner and we got the USB, I guess this is the pro version that right? comes with all these buttons of which we only need the, uh, the top two, the red and the brown. Um, I believe the brown is the color sensitivity or the color control and the uh, red is the sensitivity. So um, it, it's more the pro i guess is, is more configurable um, but before i turn it over what we have we have the power coming in right and then we put it into a uh a female uh barrel jack and then we connect that to the power switch 
the 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 red side or the uh, VCC side to the power switch, and then we just pass the ground through. Right, so we have here. Right, we have um, power coming in, so this connects to the the output. Right, as you can see, power coming in, and then on the out, other side of that. Right. We have power going out, so this connects to our um, uh, our uh, atomic pi right? uh, through a uh, a level converter. So we, we're going 12 volt to 5 volt. Um, I guess buck converter is what they call it. And finally, on here, you see it's a USB hub. So we have three USB sources. We have the encoder board. We have the USB spinner and we have the USB trackball um, all plugged into the uh, USB hub and then that gives us a single USB wire coming out which is just easier in terms of cable management. All right, I'm going to turn it over and this is what it looks like. So we had to mount this as you can see we just we took a piece of uh, it's the Simpson strong tie you get from Home Depot or Lowe's cut it right use a step bit drill a um, 28 millimeter hole in it and then mounted one nut on this side one nut on the other side to keep it there and this is this is what we have obviously we're not gonna be able to keep the, the that base there but this is what we have. So this is the GRS Pro version. You get from Micro Center, 80 bucks, right? I think the regular one, the, the version three, this is version three. So the version two was like 50 bucks or something like that. So this is 80, 70 something bucks, but I call it 80 because you end up paying that much after tax, right? So uh, this is the Pro Spinner. Or a pro track ball. The difference here is that the uh, ball doesn't light up, but the surrounding um, uh, circle lights up. So it's different. I rather that the whole ball lights up, but based based on their technical um, difficulties, they couldn't get a light up ball or a translucent ball. Right. So here it is, upside down <laughs> for you. Right side up now. Okay. And yeah, that's what it looks like. Right. Spinner spins. Spinner really spins. <laughs> right. Good to go. All right, be back in a little bit. Put it on the uh, install it into the cabinet, and we'll take a look from that. Okay, so here we go. This is the, I would say about 95% complete. Um, the only thing that's missing obviously is the plexi um, with the correct bezel. So still just need to go out and do that, but that's that's trivial. Um, this mod is pretty much complete. Um, you know, as we're saying, We've got the GRS buttonhole spinner. Um, probably could recess it a little bit more, but yeah, that's fine. Um, the GRS Pro Trackball, right? So um, we can control the speed and the butt uh, and the uh, uh, is it uh, something per inch, whatever the CPI is. That's the, the resolution of the trackball, so you can do it on the fly as 12, or I don't know how many settings, but I have a bunch of settings. And then this one here changes the color of the trackball. So now it's spinning. Ooh, I like this one. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so on the fly changes, which is nice, um, a nice upgrade. Uh, we added uh, not really a full coin door, but uh, 
they have that 3D printed coin door or kind of 3D, 3D look, I guess. So what I did was I made it 3.5D where I actually put, drilled out the, the, the area where the button pit, picture was and actually put in real buttons and those work just fine. I do have the 3D printed coin door, but I thought this, this kind of looked cool. So we're gonna, we're gonna rock with this. Um, gives it a, a nice interesting look. All right. Uh, <clears throat> everything is wired up. The, the beauty of the Atomic Pi is it it uh, doesn't take a lot to wire. All right. We have it right there um, with the enchilada board. Um, gives us this uh, power header here. All right. Um, this is a Duroc. Um, I believe that's the, the manufacturer. It's just a uh, 12 volt buck converter. So we have the 12 volts going into the control panel. We switch it with the with the power switch, and then we bring it back down to the buck converter. And there's five volts coming out to the atomic pile to power that. And then we have 12 volts going into the VGA converter board and the um, marquee. We also have. Uh, <clears throat> the VGA converter output in um, amplified uh, stereo. This goes into the speaker. Um, it is a, um, I forgot what this cable is called, but I, I'll link it in the description and you can see how the wires are connected, right? Green to yellow, I think that's the mic. There's no mic, so that's really no connect. Um, red to red, black to black, white to white. All right. And that's about it. That, that's how she's wired up. You know, not much. A couple of things that we had to do, as you can see, we needed to drum off that area over there uh, for those buttons to fit. And we put those there so we can have easy access. Plus, no one will know it's there unless you tell them it's there. All right? Or they come behind the cabinet. All right? Um, what's nice about the trackball is once you set it, you don't even have to change it. The only thing you really can play with, need to mess with this, is the color, the CPI you don't need to mess with once you've set it. Or if you think it's too sensitive or not sensitive enough, I guess, you can change it on the fly. Yeah, so that's, that's how she's wired up. I'm going to close the back up. And basically, uh, this becomes my, my input, which is nice. It's just, uh, you know, the back area just goes on. No modifications, no extra power, no nothing else. Uh, that's it. So, there it is. A vertical Tempest, how it's, what it's supposed to, how it's supposed to be. Um, we can look at some of the, uh, the games here. Starting with Arkanoid, so um, one of the things you have to be aware of is when mapping the controls, you need um, up, down, left, right. So what I did was on my USB encoder, I map. I just use the buttons from the. So I guess these are some other projects. Whatever. I took those buttons out, plugged them into the encoder, the up, down, left, right part of the encoder, and, and map them. And then I don't need them anymore, all right? Once I'm done with the configuration, all right? I don't need them anymore uh, because I can navigate with my trackball, all right? So I can do a big, oh, it's done now. I changed the, uh, the sensitivity in the trackball so it doesn't, so now I can really go through all the games. So I think, what is it saying? You're 33. 34 games here, All right? So we just, some some games are, are really horizontal games, but eh. and then I didn't comb it with a fine tooth comb, All right? Um, the, the marquee game just had to work, right? <laughs> it had, had, to, had to be, so this, uh, this uh, theme gives you um, how many players, how many times you played it, how long you played it. I don't believe I played Asteroids in there. I don't think that updated. Oh, it was Asteroid Deluxe I played. 
<laughs> right? Um, and then at the bottom of each game, it tells you how to how to start it. So to press one player, two players start, and then how to exit the game. One player plus two players start. Right? So you go in all the games. Um, we did all the software configuration. Um, this is probably the game that get paid paid the most. You can see. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and it's correct aspect ratio, everything, you know. So to launch a game quickly, or you can press the fire button. I have them both mapped in, in the attract mode. And there she is, centipede, and then give it, give it some money. All right, give it a credit, as you can see. And now I can, I can't, I can't, I can't reset. You can also do left and right with the spinner, but obviously it's not good for this game because you need to go up and down if you wanted to. <laughs> now, if I wanted this to be a little bit more sensitive, I could change the CPI. Look at that. Oh, it got me, it broke off, and then came and got me. <laughs> Any case. All right, so if I change the CPI, uh, I can't remember what it stands for, but there, there's many settings. You can go very um, not sensitive to very sensitive if you wanted to. So you didn't even need to mess with the uh, the main controls. You could just do it via a button and go super sensitive if you need it. Um, some people like it sensitive, some people don't. Um, but yeah. A lot of these games I found, a lot of these spinner games are just, they're all the same thing. This like Arkanoid, or maybe Arkanoid is based off of something else. I don't know where the original, but this is funny. This is a soccer game <laughs> with a spinner. So that, that's kind of original, right? It changes the whole spinner thing, but there's a bunch of this game, Gox. Uh, hopefully that's how you pronounce it. Same Arkanoid formula. Gigas, same Arkanoid formula. Geekus Mark II, same Arkanoid formula. Goindal, same Arkanoid formula, all right? So this is different American Horseshoes. Old school game, Liberator. I think this is supposed, this is supposed to be a horizontal game. Marvel Madness, I think that's also supposed, supposed to be a horizontal game, but it works well. Uh, Major Havoc, that's vertical. Millipede. Missile Command, that works well. Quester. I think Missile Command is one of the only games to use all of these, so we use for the left. Left left missile, sec, uh, middle missile, right missile, right? Real fun. Um, yeah. Uh, what is this? Riddle of Pythagoras. Same Arkanoid. Uh, we skipped over Slither. Slither it looks like centipede millipede type deal. Space duel, that's asteroids. Star Trek, that's interesting. It's like asteroids. Kind of. <clears throat> um, this is interesting. It's actually kind of fun. Tempest, of course. And I found this game called Tempest 2, Tubes Tempest. I don't know what, I mean, it's almost exactly the same, except it's just different levels. Victory. This one uses five buttons. Yeah, so that one's interesting. With the Fortune, that's the spinner. This wolf pack is, is a beta game. It works. You get some, uh, you suffer from seizures and you don't want to play this one. Just because of that. <laughs> right. um, yeah, and that's it. You know, so yeah, we've gone through. This one is a very complicated game. Let's see why it didn't get a lot of play. Or maybe it did in some arcades, I guess. Capcom Bowen. Crystal Castles. I think Crystal Castles is a horizontal game, but we squished it. It's okay.
Yeah, that's it. That's all she wrote. Yeah, it's uh, I don't know, understand why they didn't do the vertical aspect ratio to begin with. So, all right, uh, I guess what we'll do in the next video is just once I get around to uh, getting that plexi from uh, from Lowe's and painting it, I will uh, maybe I'll show you how that's done. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Peace. I don't know if I showed the, the volume. Uh, one of the things in the volume, um, with the stock volume, I guess. So let's, there we go. So this could get very loud. Basically, that's just... Right. That's just the... the, the uh, we connected the volume switch to the, uh, the um, VGA converter board. Um, but in the Linux, um, De uh, I guess the Debian Linux, what we did was we uh, used the PA, PA control, PACTL, Set the uh, set the volume uh, <clears throat> in the software to I think I set it to 150 percent. So the PA control lets you set it above 100 percent. So now you set that to 150, and then you can back it off using the volume switch here. So now you can get you like it loud. It can get loud. You can. You can set it, the PACTL will let you set it to whatever the hell you want it to. All right, you can set it above 200% if you want. Uh, this is, because of these speakers, it'll start to get distorted um, if you set it up too high and then you set this high. You know, basically it's just a potentiometer, I guess. Um, uh, but yeah, you, you can, this volume will be as loud or louder than the, the original stock arcade one up if you wanted to.